Hey guys, it's the Jab Geek here, and welcome back to Ace Attorney, where we are going into the first section of our last trial bit. And we're starting out here because it immediately started when I went in, instead of having the usual, we're in the visitor's lobby. Um, so I wanted to be here, because I have no clue what's going on, but let's figure it out together, considering... Our client is guilty, but we still have to find him innocent in order to get Maya back unharmed. Or at least that's how the story is going right now. And this is like the creepy music, I believe, from the tutorial portion of the game. Uh, how did I get into this mess? Yeah, that's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix, right? Yeah, this is exactly like the tutorial. Well, what have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. B but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence. You are no longer worthy of your title. Possibly because he believes that every single one of his clients has to be innocent. And it's just like, that's not how it really goes. I've had this dream before, somewhere, as if the day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer to prove a killer innocent. Sorry, dude. Even the guilty deserve a fair trial. Hello, this is Phoenix, right? You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? So that's an actual phone, or is it not? <laughs> If you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Ugh. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix. Mia. Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, wh what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. B but you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here. Not anywhere. Who's calling me now? Ugh, set our curse on guard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Ugh, gumshoe. I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? Let me join the investigation team we're chasing after the killer, pal. Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're going to do everything we can to find the killer. If we can get Maria out, then you... Okay, there we go. Then you can get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. We could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? You have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer. If you go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Well, it's the second strongest weapon in the world. The first one's love. 
It's love then friendship. Get it right, Mia. <laughs> hey. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through. I know it. Let's hope so. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly Miss Adrian Andrew's role in this murder. That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ongard. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those which she cannot escape. Hmm. Then you're saying that she is guilty after all. I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I'd like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. A assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Cordo was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Ongard. What a surprising turn of events. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true, but we still have to hold out as long as we can, at least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Powers, please. You don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? I yes. I, I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I'd like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ongard's room. Uh, okay, sure. I didn't even realize he went to see Matt. I mean, I get it, like, it makes sense, but I didn't realize that had happened. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. Is that the butler? He was talking with someone. At first, I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Powers' testimony. Talking with the bellboy is no big deal. One assumes that the person Mr. Ongard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy. What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge in head first, right? But also at the same time, Edgeworth also knows what's going on. So maybe he's setting these traps purposefully and not just like getting on with it. Like, that's what I'm hoping he's doing. And not being an utter douche. And I'm just gonna have to question him everything. The defendant's room? Why did you go there? 
Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother, sort of. And I wanted to say congrats. What's wrong? Why did you stop? M M Mr. Wright? Uh, what is it? You... You're going to try and trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer. Um, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time. Witness, I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. S sorry. So you went to the defendant's room, and then? Hey, wait a minute. When and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? With your terrible questions. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. What time is this? Are you sure that was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the nickel samurai mask then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was a bellboy. At first? At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was wearing a bellboyish uniform and he had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. Although, I do find it interesting that he is holding the juice, the tomato juice, which makes it very likely that that was how the killer got into Corda's room. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you're watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? That's a perfectly normal thing to do. So how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. I had guests with me that night and I couldn't make them wait for me. So who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and Little Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. Probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from the story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. After the award ceremony, I went by myself. Oh, did we not? Matt was standing there in front of his room. What's... What do I have? Um, the... Post-ceremony show... Just carrying the camera stuff there. With love's last. What is going on? I was standing in front of the room, so I think I forgot summary costume. I was talking with someone at first, I thought it was a bellboy. Is it not possible to ask what he looks like? The only few minutes she stated, um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, 
Well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Ah, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Okay. Matt the gave the bellboy tip. I watch the two of them for a while, but then I get up. Okay, what about the tip? So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny puncher like me. I'm trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much was it? How much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket, and that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm? I'm afraid I don't follow at all. Sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. I want to ask about the tip first and then go back to the face. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give a generous tip, so wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Could you please clarify for the court about how much you would say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really... Really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash? Ah, uh, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? Very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, your honor. Hmm. Judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Um... The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is typical fare for people like him. Gotta keep- we have to stretch this out. Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? It's got a point. I don't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. Hmm, supposing the roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, your honor. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Corda. Then... Then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Hmm. I'm supposed to be stretching this out. Hold your horses now, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the cart Shelley the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley the Killer. He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I'm certain that the person the witness saw this was this very assassin, Shelley the Killer. R really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. The second time. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when the bellboy saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say the room, I mean Juan Corda's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... You mean what? Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. 
Let us first establish the bellboy was truly Mr. De Killer. Then we shall see. Okay, he might be helping us stretch this case out. Hmm, so the bellboy came out of the victim's room. If that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha 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 ha. This is no laughing matter. I thought it was a, a, a sarcastic laugh more so than anything. But then again, I could have read that wrong. This is getting fascinating because I don't have like anything to disprove him. I'm just like proving him more and more. But at the same time, Edgeworth is like stopping the testimony early. I think it's to hopefully give the police more time. I hope that's what he's doing. But let's just question him on everything. And what time was it? Uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that. And then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8, 10 p.m. by that time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Actually, let me look at the autopsy. Time of death was 8.15. You could have been five minutes off, I would have. I wouldn't put much past him. So sorry. I thought I could make me catch Matt and say my congrats. Him being five minutes off when he wasn't paying attention to time is... That's fine. That's when I saw the bellboy come out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform, after all. But you see, he had those stitches in his face. Ugh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Okay, I think I was supposed to ask about his face and then move on to asking about the tip. Which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course, when I say room, I mean long quarters room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, alright. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why you inspit? Why the inspit grin? Maybe because I have no idea what the damaging thing he's going to say next? Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a car and he wasn't holding a tray either. You call that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm. I agree that is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide or... Try and pull a fast one. That's all we can do. There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. Objection! If you two are done being school children, bellboys are for room service. There's no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. He put the tray down, and then he left. Ta-da. Empty-handed. Your Honor, I ask that the witness previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Ugh, Edgeworth. Are you going to do whatever you can and make the bellboy look as suspicious? Yes, because he is suspicious. I see. Very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please? Y yes, sir. Thought it was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of the guest rooms empty-handed. Um, can I question him on this again, or no? So you're saying that what it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy... Thank you, this is exactly what I needed. He was holding a tray in his hand. 
and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice. What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. He could come out with some sort of reason as to why he could come out empty-handed. Some sort of proof, and I think we can judge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record. Um... to be this, right? Mr. Powers? Y y yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy must have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches, and, and... Stitches aren't suspicious, dude. So, and baseball has stitches. Are you saying that all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Gulp. Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corda's body. The liquid inside the glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner here. Can anyone clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it? The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corda's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah, but... That would mean the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, uh, but can you prove that Mr. Corda was already dead at that time? Uh, m Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? I, I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? I is there? The bellboy was empty-handed, or should I say empty hand? And Carl used had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Huh? What? The bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? That's not suspicious at all. Yeah, pitch black leather ones. Ooh. That is true. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't she mention them earlier? Because Edgeworth was trying to give us time. S sorry, it slipped my mind. Ugh, way to just make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, mister, right? That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Why are we going down the sports suspicious route? It's really weird. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they are made of leather? It is rude. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant, allegedly. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. Allegedly. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ugh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. Their second meeting. After leaving Quan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left, without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. Hmm. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kinda saw that by accident. 
Some accident. I say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. Okay, at this point I'm not sure if Edgeworth is helping us, like, spread this case super long. Like, he's giving us things to object to, but then he counteracts them. So I'm like, I'm not sure if he's helping or not, and it's kind of upsetting me. After leaving the room, he locked on Matt's door. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? I excuse me? Maybe poor underpaid action star. But even I want to stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye and the sorta of sneaky spy like. I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the ball boy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. You know what? I said, hold it. Um, okay. That's better. Ahem. What kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him only one question at a time. I... asked who the person was. So who took the something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face. Yeah. Well, it was Mr. Ongard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. Ongard himself, I said. I, I'd say, except Adrian also had access to the room. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so he gave the person inside the room the thing. Then the old guy just left. Well, let me ask what the thing was. Um... What? Ask what the something was. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? Ha ha ha. If I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it something, would I? This implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, up to this point if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who retrieved the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is some of the is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. Hmm. I think it was... No. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Y yes, sir. If I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. A wooden... It wouldn't by any chance be that, would it? But I don't- but that gives away too much. A statue? Yeah, it kind of looked like one, I guess. Saw the actual thing again, I probably remember, you know? Looks like for this trial to proceed, I'm going to have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. I'm going to have to trust your instinct on this one and take a chance on it. What did the bellboy do after that? I think it's the bear, but I'm not 
too sure. What is the point of the pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, your honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Y yes, your honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, the something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Matt Ongard's mansion. At the defendant's house? What does this mean? It's simple, your honor. Shelly the killer assassinated Juan Corda in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found in Mr. Ongard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, your honor. Matt Ongar is the killer's client. Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if he hadn't showed it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Uh, I almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm. I think it's clever that there's no need- It's clear there's no need for us to continue. I- I can't let this happen. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please? Y yes Mr. Wright? There's still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Alright, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? The person who received the bear. There's one thing in Mr. Powers' testimony that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. And also sorry for that clanking in the background, that is my heater turning on. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear, we can't be sure of- ah. What was that? What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm, but- but the arm. It's the nickel samurai's arm, I swear it. But we also know that Adrian was wearing it. You've gotta be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the nickel samurai. Order, order. Looks like you've dug your own grave yet again. How many times is that today? I lost count. So the person who took this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. But we know that Adrian was wearing the costume. Thanks to defense, we've made that all the clearer. What am I supposed to do now? Mia, help. We don't have time to act lost. We gotta find another angle to attack this from. Hurry. Now, I will bring the cross-examination, your honor. Again, Mr. Wright? I've already removed any end of all questionable areas of this testimony. About time you were removed from this court, Mr. Wright. I have to find something. Even one more little point will do. There are there are still questions left unanswered. What are you trying to pull? Oh well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to explore further? How are this testimony? Mr. Powers' testimony, of course. Huh? Objection! Your in inanity supervised me, Mr. Wright. I've already clarified all questionable points during the cross-examination just now. Ugh. Wasting time. 
I see your head, so it's questionable here. So it's the last one, I suppose. Um, questionable indeed, but there are really some. Is it the last one then? I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright. This was found at Mr. Ongard's mansion. However, Mr. Ongard was arrested at the hotel that night, which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh, I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. Okay, that actually makes sense. It's not possible that it was Mr. Ongard who took this bear to his mansion. Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Phew. Disaster averted, it looks. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ongard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Can't believe it. That butler, all this time, he was the killer. The killer and On Guard were working together, so to speak, and the killer was hiding at Mr. On Guard's mansion as his butler. W what a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to On Guard's mansion by the killer himself. That doesn't make any sense. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, On Guard had to do so. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Yeah, but that would have put suspicion onto On Guard, which would not have been wanted. Because the only way we saw it is because On Guard sent us to his house. Interesting. Well, Mr. Wright, we've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can tack at all? I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion, as well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt Ongard. I see no reason for this trial to continue, therefore I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, your honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? We have to spread this out as long as possible. I will now announce my ver- there is only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at On Guard Mansion. However, it's possible this all was the work of a certain other person, Adrian Andrews. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Tiss, tiss. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client, and therefore the real murderer? Well, we proved that Adrian had access to the suit, so I'm gonna have to go with her. Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ah, then... 
from the nickel samurai arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On Guard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. Albert's mansion. It was well laid trap set by Ms. Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell Ongar did it. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt onto someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty, it's murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order. All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor? For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered. Why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specifically bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely, and I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Well, we are spreading the f um, trial out, especially if we get a recess. I see. Well then, the court will take a short 10 minute recess, thank you. Prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, your honor. Like, we're spreading the case out, that is what we need to do to give Gunshu and the team time to find Maya. Ha ha ha. Oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt on Adrian. Ugh, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick. Oh, pearls? Where's Mia? I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. Maya. A really strong power? Hopefully this is Gumshoe. Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is? It's from Gumshoe, yes. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Y yeah sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Phew. That's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time. If we had just one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself. Try to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for not? A tent. Huh? A tent. I could see a circus tent. M Mia? Looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now, but I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe. Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Is this one tiny little connection the only reason for that other case that I found super stupid? If so, that is super stupid. But also clever. But still super stupid. Maya's somewhere within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a second, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map about a 300 foot radius from the main tent. Hurry. And? And? You can see a mailbox under the window just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. 
Hmm, okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. Felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so? I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Gumshoe, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are y'all right, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're going straight back into the trial. I was not expecting that. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. And again, if you hear that, that is my heater running. It is. I live in a very old building, so noises are the usual. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before. That's right, it's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secret? Alright. Why? Why does she... Why does she know it exists? Yeah, that's also strange. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. Is the center at its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell that it's just a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Hmm, interesting. So this figurine is a container of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, the superb craftsmanship. Oh yes, and you know, I forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. Can we open it? Can we get her to open it? Wait, let's see. A puzzle? That's right. Hmm, it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? Can you take it apart? So you can take it apart? How would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, this is most interesting. A boy and his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? Can she open it? At its center is a small cavity. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this, this was a present from you. That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I thought it would be perfect for Juan. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, you don't know the order. You can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? 
Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland. So I doubt there are many people with the same bear in this country. This looks like it could be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy. It can never be the same once again, once it's been broken. You really can't tell that a small jewelry box we're just looking at it. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container, or jewelry box? I never told anyone. And as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. And the two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. Ongard didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Seriously, if she can open it... Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? Thank you. What's inside? That's right. That's what we're going to find out next. Witness? Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. Thank you. There is a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews, now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? Wh what is that? This looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? Is it the suicide note? It's the suicide note. The suicide note. The suicide note left by Juan Corda's former manager, Celeste Inpa. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts. But just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corda himself. It seems Celeste Inpa had a very beautiful handwriting. She just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Order. Witness, did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public, but I couldn't find it anywhere, because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edwards' pace. So now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's where I would think. Now then, I believe it's only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I cannot allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang out loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impak left to us a record of all that had happened to her, about being used and then thrown away by On Guard, about being engaged to Corda and On Guard's role in destroying that, and about how she decided, in her despair, to end it all. I kind of would have liked for the note to have actually been read. And that's all Miss Impak had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. Prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. On Guard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post ceremony show, he was going to hold a press conference. My word. That on guard values above all else is refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. 
But how would he have known about the bear? Unless the video camera. But even still. At any cost. This still doesn't explain why this is uh, a fault that one killed herself, and this time he even went as far to kill someone to stop him from feeling that. How terrible, but it's a selfish person. Guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. There's no room for doubt here. Mr. DeKiller's client goal was to obtain the suicide note. But how would he even known it was in that bear? The only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. How did it get there? It, that still doesn't make sense, because if On Guard were to have had it, then it would have needed to have been taken back to his place, which means the killer would have had to have re-found it. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Ugh. How am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, as you know what you must do. I know, I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence, the figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those? Gavel is already in the judge's hand, Phoenix, hurry. The suicide note or the figurine? Which one of these should I pursue? How the figurine got to the house, I think. Please wait, your honor. Yeah, the jury is super mad. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it. It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I don't. The assassin took this with him from the murder crime scene after murdering Mr. Corda, at the request of his client, of course. So, what's your point, Mr. Wright? I don't think it's possible that Mr. DeClerc's client was Mr. Matt Onward. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. You can't tell by just looking at it, it that this bear is really a jewelry box. The chances that Matt Ongard thought the note was inside this bear are zero to none. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly, but I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. After all, there's no reason why Mr. Onvard would ever want a jewelry box like this. Order, order, order. You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I did think it rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Like, huh? The defense seems to be in love of wishing more despair upon itself. What? I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It's a very small video camera, your honor. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? I thought that spy camera was in my possession. Matt Ongard and the victim both thought of the other as their biggest rival. They even went as far as to use this type of item to find each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Juan Corda, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt Ongard. But only within the hotel. So that... He would have had to have opened it in the hotel. That's the thing. Order. Order. Ahem. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor? You don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well, sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch, using this, Gumshoe's Bug Sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Ongar's fingerprints were on there? Well, Phoenix, looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? 
What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Armgart learned of the suicide note through this. Okay, there being another camera does make a lot more sense. Because he would have had to have opened it in the hotel with the bare security camera. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey, now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Shush, stop, don't look at him. The way he's sweating is just so ill, nasty. Phoenix? Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What am I going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edwards is very close to putting the lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something he should investigate. I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded. Not remembering to look into the item which he had. Into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Alright, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia is talking about? Can I figure out what it still needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? Um, first, I'm gonna save it right here in case I'm wrong. Now we have to present evidence. I have an objection, Your Honor. Hmm. That was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You were so close, Mr. Edgeworth, but there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. I'm confused. Actually. Hmm. Have we proven this was real? I'm gonna be right back while I think about this slash look it up if it takes me too long. Okay, so I did, in fact, think it through, and then because I was thinking I was stupid and on the wrong path, I also did confirm with the walkthrough, because I was just not sure. But the thing is, are we sure that this is actually the suicide note? That is the answer. That is Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Hmm? Who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear, but this bear was not in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Oh. So? As to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Ms. Inpok or not, that has yet to be even remotely confirmed. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting. Mr. Wright, you, are you saying the suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tried to pin the murder on Mr. On Guard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it in this bear? How, how dare you? 
Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There is no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who would have solved this puzzle is the witness herself. Miss Andrews? You wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I... I didn't know such thing. Right? If you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you were the one who presented the scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on the suicide note? It is as the defense state has stated, the handwriting has yet to be analyzed. And that's the case. It seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impos- That's impossible. This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I mean, as long as she's getting water, she'll be fine. I don't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analysis is my butt. That's just what the lawyer is trying to buy more time. On guard is guilty. Look, any idi idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Please tell me that is gumshoe. What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe. What is with him and what's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh, he got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. Wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout. Pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. We're gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. We just need a little more time. But don't tell me we don't. We don't have any more. Guilty, guilty. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't. For us to come this far and... Oh, what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I, I can't do that. Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch. Is this Mr. Edgeworth? Please, you gotta buy us some more time. Court is in session. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying? Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. Ugh, this time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Please wait, Your Honor. Uh, Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I only request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary test on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But would it be better if we adjourned for the day and then rec reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Goodness gracious. Hopefully Gumshoe can... 
make it in 30 minutes. Right. Well, what's going on with Maya's situation? The killer it looks like he got away again. 30 minutes. Can't find her in that time. Ugh. Or maybe? Report. Ah, uh, is that Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time, just spit it out. R right. Looks like we just missed them, sir. The decoder left a few things behind by accident and has rushed to get away. A few things? Can we use any of them as evidence? Oh, ho ho ho, I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things he left with me right now and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. When those guys weren't looking, so I've got stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I gotta put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. With my hunk of junk car, I'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. No, tell us what you have over the phone. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. Alright, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling all stops and running every red light. Don't do that. Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. What? What was that? Was that Gumshoe? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. No one can stop- Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What happened? Sounded like he had an accident. Guessing his cell phone broke as well. What, what was he thinking? Gotta hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, if we don't get to those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well... If there is a way we can find out where he is, then we can stand a chance. Why oh why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find out exactly where he's at this moment? Can't we use the transceiver? Maybe? I mean... If we know where he was coming from, then we can find the best option, technically. That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe through this. The transcriber? Transcriber? Transceiver? I can't speak. Right? We're not in the middle of a mock trial here. Guess this won't work, huh? Guess it's up to me. Alright, I'll think of something on my end. Don't get your hopes up too high, but I'll try my best. Did I say something wrong? Edgeworth? What is it? I don't have any r right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now... I'm pinning the guilt into someone totally innocent, and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right. It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Prosecutor Edgeworth, here? Yes, Bailiff? There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. Probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. We gotta find the dude guilty. Or Maya would beat us up. I think she would most certainly beat us up. Um... But I'm also at the point of hoping that um, Gumshoe just, his phone broke, but he decided to grab all the stuff and just run. That is what I'm really hoping for. And I guess next time we have to wait to see if we can find Maya, find a killer, 
and then also finally get our guilty verdict that we desperately need and want and figure out how this all wraps up um but it does seem like in a way Edgeworth was helping us by stalling a bit which is great he was pretending to be his usual swarmy self but he was actually helping us which was very nice um but we'll just have to see what he does next time. And I will see you guys later for that. Bye!